Hi everyone. Uh, uh, in today's session, we'll be like Sathak and I will be talking about all the project updates of the Litmus Chaos and what all contributions uh, have been added in the past few months. So before starting, a uh, bit of intro. So I'm a senior software engineer at Harness and also uh, one of the maintainer at Litmus Chaos. And I've been uh, contributing for more than uh, three years and I've been mostly working on the backend side of things of uh, Chaos Center. So yeah, uh, over to you, Sathar. Yeah, thanks, Sarnia. So my intro is pretty much the same. Uh, I'm also a senior developer at uh, Harness and the maintainer of Litmus Chaos. So yeah, as Sarnia already told, we will be speaking about some interesting updates we have ma made in Litmus Chaos in uh, uh, past few months. And um, you know, to start off with, we'll start off with the mentorship program. So we have been participating in um, um, uh, like multiple mentorship programs and LFX mentorship is one of them. And we have participated in multiple LFX mentorship programs as well. So talking about the recent couple of ones. So we have uh, talking about the year 2024, we have participated in term one and term two as well. So let's start off with term one. So we have added the support for multiple project owners, which was uh, done by Aryan Bhokare. So basically earlier Litmus used to have a one is to one mapping for project and owner, but now with these changes, uh, even a single project can have multiple owners so they can, um, you know, manage all the resources, uh, and can divide the workload. Second one was for Litmus CTL, where we have added E2E test cases. So the aim was to make the product stable. And for that, we have added uh, E2E test cases to test out the changes. Then we have also added support for uh, probes via, via Litmus CTL and uh, then package man uh, manager availability, which is nothing but um, adding Litmus CTL to homebrew. So the Mac users can now directly install Litmus CTL via brew. And this was done by Shivam. Third one is enhancing uh, enhancing Chaos Center, implementing E2E test cases and addressing CV issues. So again, the aim was to make the product stable. And for that, we have added some E2E test cases and also fix some of the vulnerabilities that we identified. This was done by um, MR Dhanush. Another interesting thing about uh, the term one mentorship was uh, we, have, we had a couple of mentors, namely NamQ and uh, um, Nagesh, who um, you know, who are earlier uh, mentees themselves. So, you know, it's good to see that uh, they, they stayed with us even after the mentorship program was done, uh, was completed. And uh, uh, then we had them as mentors here. Then coming to term two. So the first one is to add support for upgrade agent in Litmus 3.x, uh, which was done by Kartikeya Saxena. So with this, users can now directly, uh, you know, upgrade their Kyo center from one version to another and all the DB related changes or schema related changes can uh, now be handled by the upgrade agent. So when uh, like, like now users don't have to worry on resetting the data when uh, jumping from one version to another, the database or the schema can be upgraded via the upgrade agent. The second one is enhancements in chaos center. So you know, support for GitOps for Azure Git. And uh, then we have also added environments um, which, uh, via which users can basically classify their chaos infrastructures into different categories. So uh, the support was added in um, UI. So in the infrastructure selection modal, users can group chaos infra by chaos infras by environments. This was done by Janvi. Then third one is, um, is was to revamp Litmus Helm agent and uh, UBI migration of images. Uh, this was done by Dion. Yeah, another great initiative around uh, mentorship is the Open Source Contribution Academy, uh, which is a mentorship program in South Korea, and this is currently ongoing. So they are working on, uh, I mean, the mentors and mentors and mentees are working on uh, um, few features and uh, some of, and some of the uh, issues that they are they are trying to fix. And here are the list of few things that they have already worked on. So uh, first one is fixed issues pointed out by code QL and code scanning checks. So in order to uh, you know make the product vulnerability free, we have integrated a few tools with uh, it. So one of them is CodeQL, which identifies the vulnerabilities. So they have fixed those, uh, most of them. And uh, yeah, coming to second one, a readme file has been added in Korean language as well. Then a uh, few deprecated commands have been replaced with the environment file in GitHub workflows. And um, some improvements have been made in Litmus documentation. Then some UI improvements have been made in Chaos Hub. So, you know, when user connects a Chaos Hub, now you users can now see in the UI that um, 
like they can see a loading state while the chaos hub uh, is being connected is being created or connected then as part of bug fix the instance tag is renamed to uh, ec2 instance tag uh, which fixes the target selection error in the fault then some image links have been fixed in the readme and um, the swagger files have been updated with the correct versions security audit enhancements so recently litmus went through a security audit which was performed by the 7a security team and uh, they pointed out some um, issues and some uh, you know great enhancements that could be made in litmus chaos in order to make make it more secure for the users as well as for the developers so the first one was to make the login api error messages generic so uh, this was done so that you know we don't end up revealing any information to any attacker in case uh, you know someone tries to log in um, a, a malicious user tries to log in uh, using some apis or some um, you know invalid jwt tokens then some necessary airbags were added for creating and fetching api key so i mean api key is again um, uh, you know sensitive information so it requires a proper checks to be there and we have added then again necessary airbags were added for a couple of apis that is invite users and uh, get project members members api so only the users with the specified permission will be able to access these apis via front end as well as via uh, uh, like directly via apis then um there's course validation added for graphql server and authentication server so this was added to you know restrict uh, uh, restrict any requests coming from um, uh, different origins or just allow some of the origins um, to uh, like whitelist some of the origins to you know make the request to graphql certification server then yeah a reset password step is now made mandatory if a new user logs in so earlier this step was not mandatory but now that whenever a user logs in whenever uh, you know even admin logs in or admin creates a new user the user logs in they will have to set up a new password which is a mandatory step now then as part of this um, we've added a username and password so earlier again this uh, strict validation check was not there for password but um, uh, you know as part of uh, making the platform more secure user will um i guess uh, sarthak has been disconnected so uh, maybe i'll share my screen and continue with the updates yeah um so as part of security uh, audit enhancements uh, so um we added some st uh, strict validation for username and password and then uh, as part of that uh, like uh, earlier graphql server was having uh, too much uh, access to the kubernetes cluster and uh, uh, i hope my, i'm audible here yeah okay so yeah, I was talking about adding executor permissions as a new, um, you know, as a new permission, and we have uh, deprecated the editor role. So, you know, executor, uh, any user with executor role can now uh, execute chaos experiments and view the results and few other uh, operations. And since you have added, uh, uh, you know, support for multiple project owners, so like project owners are now responsible for creating any uh, new experiment. Then uh, we have added support for JWT secret creation upon um, KO Center installation. So earlier, this JWT secret used to be um, just a constant, so which can be used by the attacker to you know easily decrypt the token. But now that we have added this in the DB, it, it becomes very difficult for the uh, for any attacker to access this uh, secret and uh, you know exploit the token. So yeah, th this change was made. Uh, we have then removed KTS client go dependencies from GraphQL. So in order to optimize the performance, we have completely removed the client go dependency from GraphQL server. And then uh, um, we've added environment based support for HTTPS connection. So users can now provide TLS certificate and other certificates that are required to set up a HTTPS connection. And once they are done with that, they can access Chaos Center in an, on an HTTPS. Then um, we have added network policy uh, YAMLs in Chaos Center. Uh, we have also upgraded Go versions in all the modules of Chaos Center from you know, 1.20 to 1.22. Then we have added ENV support to enable disable GraphQL introspection. So GraphQL introspection is nothing but you know displaying the GraphQL APIs on GraphQL Playground. 
so um, it now it, it is now uh, on completely on the user if they want to enable or disable it we and graphql also generally suggests to uh, disable it in while working in a production environment then we have added git leaks in pr checks in order to um, you know avoid uh, leaking any uh, sensitive information on um, github so yeah, these are about the security audit enhancements that were made and uh, for other updates uh, sarnya over to you okay um so uh, yeah so as part of uh, other additions like uh, the community the litmus community members have uh, raised a, 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 a lot of uh, prs in uh, multiple areas such as uh, in uh, quality enhancements uh, whole uh, like uh, uh, add addition of new features faults and uh, yeah, like user flow and then uh, several bug fixes as well so yeah as part of quality enhancements um, uh we have added uh, uh, multiple uh, first test suits in uh, in different uh, litmus repositories and uh, as part of that uh, the first tests are uh, added as pr checks uh, so that like in case um in case there is any uh, uh, like any issues with any uh, failing test suits will be notified uh, in the pr itself so that uh, this this kind of enhances uh, and uh, like mint uh, enhances the maintainability of the code and then uh, as part of the same uh, we have also uh, integrated uh, the first uh, testing suits with google's open oss works which uh, which ensures that uh, all the testing test suits are uh, run and built and run on a daily basis and in case there is any failure uh, the maintainers are notified timely to uh, rectify the same so uh, another uh, uh, aspect is uh, addition of uh, unit tests so as part of that multiple uh, unit tests have been added uh, in in the in the qo center repository and uh, e2e tests as well so yeah and as part of uh, vulnerability fixes uh we have like the uh, community members have raised multiple uh, prs to uh, like update the vulnerable uh, vulnerable packages in uh, uh, ko centers authentication in graphql servers and litmus has also been uh, migrated away from the old uh, orgo ui packages uh, orgo ui package and uh, yeah and as part of feature addition like the fault addition one of the community members has added a new uh, ko's fault that is the k uh, k6 load generator which is used to easily run load testing through a single uh, j script and uh, and then as part of enhancements uh, uh, the members have had raised a pr to verify the uh, environment id whether it is valid or not or whether the id is a valid one or not before connecting the infrastructure and then um, uh, so earlier when the dex was uh, enabled during the installation time by the users the uh, by the users the other the other team members were not able to there was no way they they can uh, know that uh, whether the dex is enabled or not through the ui so as part of uh, as part of this uh, one of the community members have added a login with sso button in the ui which will be uh, displayed automatically when if the dex, uh, dex is enabled and user can directly uh, click on it and uh, log in uh, by the uh, by the dex like um, they have uh google and uh, github uh, authentication uh, right now okay and uh, then as part of ui fixes uh, so earlier the uh, as you might have noticed like the pod locks that we that were coming uh, when the kios uh, experiment experiments were running was not like the, uh, the formatting was not correct and it was a bit difficult to understand uh, uh, the outcome and uh, so as part of that uh, we have received uh, prs to uh which format which formats the logs in a uh, readable manner which has helped the users to understand the logs and uh, uh, get insights from it and then um as part of uh, ko center ui uh, enhancements uh, there were multiple prs uh, related to improvement in the whole user flow uh, addition of uh, loaders wherever necessary and then uh, multiple css fixes and then um, as part of uh, bug fixes uh to reduce the flakiness of the platform there were some uh some cases where nil pointer issues were there so that 
those uh, have been like the proper uh, error handling mechanisms has been uh, added there in both uh, back end and front end to avoid such, uh, such issues and then there were some issues with uh, routing as well uh, some uh, uh, like in the project management section there were some issues with the routing and then uh, rbac related issues as well so uh, all of them uh, like most of them are fixed by the community members and then with the 3.9 sorry with the 3.x release uh users were uh, the uh, users were facing some issues uh, with the uh, gitops trigger flow and uh, like they were facing issues in uh, the crud ops the of the whole um, flow so that has been uh, fixed and uh, now the gitops trigger is uh, working seamlessly in the 3.x releases uh, and uh, yeah and uh, lastly uh, uh, like with the 3.9 release uh, Chaos Center cluster scope installation is now uh, no more supported. Now, uh, after the uh, in the recent releases, we are now only supporting the namespace scope installation. So yeah, so these were some of the high level uh, uh, high level uh, contributions that have been added. Other than that, we have had multiple contributions in uh, Litmus documentations, uh, translations, readmes. So yeah, uh, so th uh, that's that. And uh, next. Um, uh, so if you want to join the community and want to, if you are interested in contributing to, uh, to the Litmus Chaos repository, so you can just, uh, head over to, uh, Litmus Chaos uh, slash Litmus and then, uh, uh, go through the, uh, good first issues and, uh, start contributing. And if you are new here, you can just, uh, uh, go to the Kubernetes Slack and, uh, join the Litmus channel so that, uh, you can get started with Chaos Engineering. So, yeah, I hope, uh, this session uh, was uh, helpful to you. So yeah, thanks everyone. I'll just stop sharing. Yeah, I, let's see. Uh, there are a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, I can I, I can pick the one. So do you plan to do any further security audits in future? So you know, we, uh, like recently had a, um, you know, detailed security and, uh, you know, the good part is that you were able to fix all and like most of the issues that were pointed out by them. And, uh, again, the same team validated those things. So as of today, uh, I don't think we have, uh, any plans of having security audit, at least in coming few days, uh, not sure about the future. Um, we are like, like to add to what Sarthak said. So we don't plan to actually have a security audit, but uh, we have also improved our security process in terms of reporting vulnerabilities and assessing them. So uh, beyond, if you go to the Litmus Chaos repo and you see the security section, you see there's a, a report option available. So you can report a vulnerability and then we have a turnaround time for the same where you know once the vulnerability is reported it's discussed between the maintainers and then uh you know we we see how how important the vulnerability is is it lying in like a absolutely critical section or it's still you you can work through it we go through the process and then uh we we see what are the timelines for the fix so as of now the security audit is done maybe hopefully uh we'll we'll do it maybe two three years later there's no timeline for that but yeah security reporting and fixes is is an ongoing process that that goes on and we are hopeful we'll we'll add more security fixes as and when required yeah i think sir yes, you can take the next one by gary yeah yeah sure sure so yeah what is the process for assessing um the issues and is there any average time one should expect them to be addressed, right? So, um, you, know, you know, we try to pick up the um, issues based on the priority and uh, we do a periodic uh, audit of the issues and which one should be addressed first or not. Then we also mark some of the issues as good first issues, which community can contribute to. And uh, yeah, I mean, we don't have any average time for it, but yeah, we, we, we do fix based on the priorities variety of the issues. 
I think adding to what uh, Sarthak said, uh, if if there are any issues that are major blockers for any of the users to use Litmus or use the latest releases, feel free to point them out on Slack or by tagging one of the maintainers. And there are some issues that are open since, like let's say, 2018, 19, 20, which we are trying to scrub at a faster pace. But in case any of those issues are important for, for users using previous versions, say, uh, somewhere on 2.x, although we are not really supporting 2.x, but still, uh, we if, if in case we need to close them, we'll close them immediately. And then with the 3.x version, in case there are any any issues that are blocking users, we are, we are happy to address them uh, as, as, as a community. I think with this, we come to the close of this lightning talk. Uh, thank you so much once again, Saranya and Sat.